So in this video here, we're going to talk about OpenAI's new O1 model. It's a new series of OpenAI models basically for AI reasoning. So before we have the old models, which is basically just taking the prompt as input, it's just going to generate the results. It's just going to do next token generation. The new models are also doing that, but it's actually like being chained together. So it has different stages. It has thought processes as a human has as well. So this is basically just how we can add reasoning for AI models. So instead of just taking one input, generating an output, it's act like going to chain all those together. So first of all, it'll do some reasoning, thinking, it will take that output, use it as the input for the next step in the thought process. And this is a bit more how humans think, and it's definitely the direction where it's going. So if we have this thought process, we can combine it with AI agents and so on, potentially it can control our computer, either through a digital mouse and also keyboard. It can see your screen, it has the reasoning understanding from the vision, so basically just screen dumps from your PC. It can use these chain of thoughts exactly as humans are doing, and these models will be way more capable. It will be able to solve tasks that it hasn't been able to solve before. So let's dive into it and talk about the new O1 model from OpenAI. So OpenAI, when they imagine the future of AI, they basically have like different levels they're looking at. So level one is kind of like where we are at the current state. So we have chatbots, AI with conversational language, we're talking with AI models, we get the responses back and so on. And then when we take it to the next level is basically when we add reasoning to it. So we have human level problem solving. So now instead of just taking one task, trying to give an output and respond, from that given input. We're basically trying to divide it into these steps in a full pipeline, do human level problem solving. So we're doing small parts here and there. We're combining all the results and before we act like generate and get to an answer or result for a problem that we're trying to solve. So this is kind of like level two. We're starting to get there now with the new O1 model from OpenAI. And then we have level three. It will come very soon as well. We're starting to see some of it from some of the other companies, some very early agents. So this is basically just systems that can take act like actions. Could be that it can control your computer, could be in a separate system and so on. At the end of the day, we might even have like a dot language model operating system. So the AI agent, they will be able to take action in the next level. So that's going to have a huge impact because then you can basically just prompt it. It'll have human level problem solving. You can do this whole reasoning thought process and so on and act like take actions where now we still have to take the outputs, do all the stuff ourselves and act like understand what's going on in each individual step. Then we have the next level, which is level four, that is for innovators. So AI that can basically just aid an invention. So let's say that you have a good idea or maybe you can just make open AI's models or the large language model, come up with any innovative idea and act like put that into real life. So you both have the prompting, you have the reasoning, you have the innovative aspect as well. And you also have the agents we can take act like actions on your computer or like in some kind of like online digital system. And then the final level, it is basically just organization level. So it's AI that can do the exact same work as an organization. So let's say that you have a company, could be a very specialized company. Let's just take an example, could be a computer vision company. You want to set up a computer vision pipeline, solve a specific problem. So you basically just have the data set. You can feed that into the AI. You can prompt it to go and label a data set, train an object detection model if you for example want to run that it can export the model it can probably go in and optimize it for an optimization framework do all the deployments and so on so it basically just works as an organization you'll just end up being the ceo being the supervisor for the model and it will connect all these different components it is very far in the future but again we couldn't imagine having all these large language models just two years ago this space here is going so fast we have level one, we're starting now to get into level two and also some very early stuff in level three. Once we get into level four and five, it's basically going to change the whole world even more because then again, we have individuals who can just supervise it. It can start create act like stuff by itself. And again, there's pretty much no limit to it. It can work all night, all day, 24 hours, every single day. And it can also work significantly faster than we can type out code ourselves. So if you just take a look at some of the benchmark results, we can see that it basically outperforms the other models from OpenAI when we're talking about reasoning tasks. And this is also why this model is built specifically for that. It might not be the best model for all the different cases, could be for some code, could be some other use cases and so on where the other GPT-O model is still better because again, 
The response will also be slower, so you don't just have to use this O model all the time. The response will be slower because it actually like has this thinking process where it's putting together all these smaller components. So it might be that the better model is just like still take the input, get the output, use that directly. But if you really need some reasoning and so on from the large language models, it might be a good idea. And you can also see here on the benchmark results that it does a very good job compared to the GPT-4 model. So both on the competition math, there's a lot of reasoning in that, competition code, and also PSD level science questions. It also outperforms the other GPT-4 model on that. It's already available with ChatGPT from OpenAI. We have the GPT 4.0 model, they have the O1 Mini and also the O1 Preview. So I can test those out directly. And again, here we can see the response times of so GPT 4.0, three seconds, O1 Mini, nine seconds. And then if you really need some details, if you need some reasoning behind your responses, you will wait up to like 32 seconds just to get this preview model up and running. So this is a pretty cool model. It's basically just using this chain of thought, go in and check out the new models and then just stay tuned for all the new stuff, like every single day, new stuff is coming out in the AI world. And there could be a new breakthrough within just a few weeks or months. So definitely stay tuned, make sure to stay up to date. And then I'll just see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.